So in the last video, we upgraded to the latest versions of Firebase for Flutter. So right here, you can see we're on the latest versions right now. One of the side effects of that was AdMob Flutter no longer is compatible with those versions of Firebase. So this is something you could potentially wait out and maybe they'll eventually get a compatible version with that. But I am no longer going to use this package and I'm only going to use the Firebase AdMob package which at the moment only has a compatible dev version, but at least it is working. This package that we just deleted was only for the banner ad. The interstitial ad was already set up with Firebase AdMob, so if you have been following along, there's nothing you need to do to change that. If you are coming from the other banner ad video for AdMob, the setup there is going to be similar in terms of getting your ad unit IDs, and I am going to just continue using this AdMob service class. You can see this class is pretty simple. We pretty much just have a few functions that get the banner ad IDs. With the banner ad, we're going to create this new static variable, and this will be an actual banner ad, and we can just call it the home banner ad. So we're actually going to do all the logic for our banner ad within this class now, and we're going to use this home banner ads variable here. Using this variable is going to allow it so that we can hide and show this ad whenever we want to. And this is important because the way the package works, once you load the ad, so let's say we load the ad on this page, the plan is to load it right down here above the navigation. If we did this kind of the way the documentation says for that package, we can get it running and working fine, but when we click into one of these cards, because the, the way that this view is shown is pushed on top of this view, it would continue to show that banner ad down here. So this is actually pretty simple to set up though, and using this class actually makes it a little bit cleaner. We're gonna now create a function that's actually going to get that banner ad, and this function is gonna be very similar to how we have our interstitial ad here. So this is gonna be another static function. The static functions here, Essentially what they do is make it so that this class here, AdMob Services, won't be able to create an instance variable of these functions or variables. And that's useful in, in that we'll be able to just call AdMob Service dot and then whatever our static function is. This is actually going to be a function that returns a banner ad. And we're going to call it get the home banner ad. This is simply going to return a banner ad. And a banner ad could take a few properties, but really two of them that are the most important are the ones that we're going to configure it with. So it will be pretty simple. We need to give it that ad unit ID. And we already have that function that we created in the last video where we can get our banner ad unit ID. And again, right now these are just test unit IDs. If you want to find out how exactly to get your production ready ad unit ID, go check out the other banner ad video because all of that is explained in there. You'll notice if we use this here, because this is not a static, or because this is a static function now, we actually need to make this a static function as well. It's really simple to do that. We just have to call static in front of this. And we're going to want to make this only accessible within this class as well. So we can put the underscore there and then just use that here. Uh, that's not super important, but it is nice to actually follow that. Uh, the next thing we can do is add the size here, and the size can be a few different versions of the ad mob size. And you'll see, you'll see right here, there are the different versions here. We're gonna go with the smart banner, and the smart banner will basically always have the width of the screen, and then the height of the banner ad will change depending on which kind of device you're on. But you can look at the documentation for this and I'll link it below to see what these different sizes mean. But that looks good now. So we are getting our banner ad. Now we're gonna create two new functions and these are also gonna be static functions. One of them is gonna to be to show the banner ad and the other one is gonna to be to hide the banner ad. Let's call it, let's do the show first and this will be static void actually because it won't return anything. It's just gonna be performing an action. This will be show home banner ad. So the first thing we want to do in this function is actually initialize that banner ad. So right now we have this variable, we have this variable defined here, but it's not set to anything. And then we also have this function here, which will actually return a banner ad. So let's go ahead and set this variable to equal that banner ad. And we can just do that by calling that function. So now that we have this home banner ad defined, we can load it and Loading it, you can use dot dot and then load. We're always gonna to need to load it before we show it, but once it's loaded, then we can actually call show on it. 
and the show we're going to pass two parameters to it. The first one is going to be the anchor type. The anchor type is where on the screen you want this to be displayed. You really only have the choice of bottom or top, so we're going to go with bottom. And the second parameter we're going to give it is an anchor offset. If we didn't give it the anchor offset, it is going to be on the complete bottom of the screen and cover up our navigation. So we want to give it an offset of that navigation height. And luckily there is actually a K bottom navigation bar height that will return that navigation height right there. So regardless of what device you're on, it'll always be the height of the navigation. So this should get us to show the ad. Let's go ahead and call this now from our home view. So if we go to the home view now, we're going to want to call this in the init state, find the init state there. We do already have an instance of this ad mob service, but you'll notice if you try and call the function that we just created on that instance, you're going to get an error. And the reason for that is the AMS ad mob service is an instance of that class. And as I was saying before, those static functions are not going to be able to be called on an instance of that class. So we are going to have to actually just call this on the ad mob service itself. So you can see that will work now. And if you save and rerun the app, you should start seeing a banner ad down there. Now, since we didn't set up the functionality to hide this ad, if you do click onto the next page, you'll see that issue that I was talking about. The ad does not go away. That is not that hard to set up, so we're gonna do that right now. Going back into the ad mob service, let's create another function, and this is gonna be, again, a static function, and it won't return anything, so we could void there. And here we're gonna call hide the home banner ad. And this is actually going to be an asynchronous function. And then we're going to await the disposal of this home banner ad. So just call the home banner ad. And then there is a dispose future on it that we can call. So call that. We're also going to clear out this variable here. So we're just going to set that equal to null. We don't necessarily need to call this function to generate the banner ad if this already exists. So depending on how you're calling it or how you're disposing it, we may not need to call this and we can add a quick if statement in the beginning of this and just check if this is null. So if this is null, then we're going to execute this code here. Now we can hide the home banner ad when we actually go to this trip detail page. Let's go ahead and pull up the trip detail view right in the init state of this page. We can call that hide banner ad and we again we're going to have to call that on the ad mob service i don't believe the ad mob service is has been imported in here so we will have to include that package so if we save it now you'll see we do have our test ad there and if we click into the detail page we no longer have a test ad and if we go back to the home page now you'll see that ad is actually gone so we want this ad to reappear here when we go back to the home page. The way we can do that is actually to reload it by calling that show home banner ad. We're going to call this after we navigate to that trip detail view page. This is actually happening on this trip card. So when this trip card is clicked, that's when we're making the navigation. So that's when we're going to call that show again after it's been navigated. To recap, basically what's going to happen is the ad will be shown here. Then we're going to click on this, hide the ad, and then reload the ad on that home page, but it won't be loaded on this page because it would have been hidden already. We need to find where this trip card is, and it is in its own widget called the trip card. Because we use this trip card widget on the home page as well as the past trips page, we don't always want to reload the banner ad. We only want to reload it if we're on the home page. So we're going to create a new variable within this widget, and it's going to actually be an optional variable. All an optional variable means is you don't have to pass it. So to create an optional variable, you use these brackets, and this is just going to be a bool value, which means true or false, and we'll name it load banner ad. Nothing will change right now. You don't need to pass a variable into this, but if you do, now we can do something with it. So let's create the logic within here. Right down here on the on tapped, you can see we have this function for navigating to the trip detail page. So we're going to write a quick if statement around this, and we're going to say if the load banner ad 
is equal to true, then we're going to, we are still going to navigate to this page. So that part's going to be the same. And let's wrap this in an else real quick. So the else just means just only do the navigation. But if we are in the, if we did pass load banner add as true, then we can add a, we can add a then at the end of this at the end of this navigation. So this is going to be performed after that page navigation is done. We're going to actually write this on multiple lines. Right in here now, this is the within the then block after the navigation. All we need to do is call the same thing that we called on the home page, which is to show that banner ad. And we will need to import that ad mob service package as well. So if we save this, everything should be working now. So you'll see we have the ad on the home page. We go into the trip detail. The ad is not there. If we go back, the ad should reload. Okay, it didn't load because we actually didn't pass load banner ad as equaling true. So this is good because our logic is working correctly, but we do need to go ahead and pass true into our build trip card. So back in the home view, find where we are calling build trip card which is right here within our list view. And you can see we're passing those two variables already. And we're going to now just pass true for that optional parameter. And now if you save it and click on a detail, the ad is gone. And if you go back, the ad will reappear. If we run that on Android, you can see we do have the same results in that we have an ad. And if we click on it, on the trip detail, the ad is removed. And then if we go back, the ad does reappear. You'll notice the Android ad here is has a much higher height. And that's because we are using that smart banner size. So because of this device, this device's height for the ad for whatever reason is this height, whereas on the iPhone, it is a bit shorter. So if you don't want that varied ad size, you can use a different you can use a different ad size. So that's gonna be it. We got our banner ad working again on our device. Unfortunately, we do not have the banner ad in the list view or in the widget tree like we did before, but I think this placement is actually closer to the standard of what AdMob recommends for your banner ads. So this is probably a better convention anyway. Hopefully you found that useful. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. All right, ciao for now.